this fall, they all start at the top of the hour. So we're all still getting used to <laughs> showing up places on time. Classes usually start on time, <laughs> but meetings. <laughs> when I was at Michigan for undergraduate, everything started 10 minutes after the hour. So if you had an 11 o'clock class, it really started at 1110. It seemed like it took me ages to get out of that uh, routine that I had 10 minutes for everything, so. We still have a few other people join. Seems like it's holding at 13 participants. So why you say we go ahead and get going? I say we get going. Hi, great. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Lynn Watisha. I'm with Lawrence Technological University and I'm on the board at ETOM. Um, I am so pleased to introduce this next session um, representing Michigan State University. Tom Freeman, uh, Michelle Jarvey Eggart, and Amanda Singer are going to walk us through their experience with first year engineering students. Thanks so much and enjoy the session. Hello and welcome to our um, presentation on advice for online faculty. So today we're going to talk to you about some results we have from a survey of our first year engineering students at Michigan Tech. So before we begin, I want you to be aware that we're going to do breakout rooms discussions after Amanda and I present um, some of our information here. I'm Michelle Jarvie Eggert and I'm in the uh, engineering fundamentals program. And my graduate student, Amanda Singer here is with me and she's in civil and environmental engineering and Tom Freeman, who's from our Center for Teaching and Learning is also here with me today. Um, so our breakout rooms We'll cover three topics and we'll, you'll know more about those as we go through our presentation, but essentially we'll have uh, one room where we talk about academic grace, which is what we define as including flexibility, understanding, and patience. This is a term we've coined based on this research. Um, instructor presence is another room. And so folks in that room can brainstorm and talk about ideas to increase instructor, instructor presence in the classrooms online. And then we'll have a breakout room for supporting our students and folks who want to go there can discuss various strategies for how we can support online students. So if at any point during our presentation, you decide that you want to head into one of these breakout rooms and we'll remind you what they are at the end of our presentation, you can just hover over your name on the participant list and click more and then you can rename yourself. And you can rename yourself here to just the two initials of the breakout room and then your name and please add your pronouns there too as well. Our presentation today will focus on some background information and the methodology we use to develop our emergent theme codebook for the student results. Um, as well as we will present, uh, we'll briefly present the results for the online students advice um, and primarily focus on the advice for faculty. Uh, after we're done presenting the results for the online faculty and discussing those results, we will conclude our presentation with time for questions before we move into those breakout room discussions. So the work we're doing here today builds on previous work that Amanda and I have done with another student at Michigan Tech, um, Jason Matthews, who has since gone and graduated and now works for GM. Uh, but while they were undergrads, they were both part of our Leap Leaders program, which is uh, a cohort of near peer mentors or TAs that function in our first year program um, as essentially as TAs, they manage what, what amounts to a recitation system once a week with their students. And they're um, also present in our flipped classes. We have active learning in our flipped classes to help the students learn. So Amanda and Jason and I asked our first year students at the end of a year, a few years ago, what advice they would have for the incoming first year students the following fall. And 
they coded the results of this and that um, work was presented at the ASW's first year engineering experience conference. So building on our previous research we conducted at the end of the spring 2020 semester, 223 students across 67 different project teams in our engineering fundamentals courses were given an assignment and they were asked to provide advice to three different groups of people. Uh, they were first asked to provide advice for general first, they were first asked to provide advice for first semester students. And then based on the current situation with us all being in an online environment, they were asked to provide advice for online students as well as faculty teaching in an online environment. So with regards to our methods here, we downloaded our student responses, we anonymized them and coded them for common themes. We used convergent coding methods. This is a common qualitative research technique, beginning with initial codes from previous research and adding new codes as appropriate. So we started with those codes from our advice from students um, about face-to-face -face classes for incoming students in the fall. And obviously new codes were needed. So we, we maintained a code book and defined our codes and updated it with each coding cycle as new codes or, or the definitions of the codes changed. The codes were grouped together into larger themes for reporting. And that's really what we're presenting here is uh, the sum of those codes and the themes that they were grouped into. And if you're interested in this work, uh, we're also working on a paper for JEE um, as well. So that should be submitted this winter. Before delving into the advice for online faculty, we wanted to briefly highlight the results for the advice for online students. Um, the results are presented in the figure on the left-hand side here. And from that advice, there were several emergent themes that um, were prevalent. Uh, students provided advice and theme, students provided advice in areas of time management um, the idea of being learning ready or ready for your course that day, um, being able to access resources, uh, being prepared for class, maintaining self-care, promoting faculty interaction with students, communicating with the project teams, and then working hard and getting involved. Um, Michelle is providing a handout for you in the chat box which details these results a little bit more and which you, if you choose to, can share with your students. The remaining of our presentation is going to focus on the results from the Advice for Online Faculty Survey the students completed. Again, these results are presented in the figure on the left with emergent themes, um, including ideas of academic grace, which Michelle briefly detailed earlier in the presentation, um, ideas, of, ideas and comments regarding the class and lecture format, the resources available to students, maintaining communication between faculty and students, um, maintaining faculty interactions with students, as well as um, comments regarding the student workload, grading within the course, and um, maintaining a general routine. So the theme of academic grace included several codes that we identified, and those were flexibility, understanding, and patience. The flexibility code included comments about deadline flexibility, awareness of time zones, and just general overall flexibility. It was our most prevalent response under the theme of academic grace. And here you can see we have a quote here from one of our students. Be flexible with students during the transition to online. Be aware that problems can develop after the transitioning phase and be willing to help the students. The second theme within that category of academic grace is understanding. So here we have comments about understanding what the students are going through, being generous um, and open to student feedback. And we have a quote here, understand that not everyone has good space to study and work and will struggle and may need extra time. Many of our comments here had to do with distractions of students that were working at home and sharing spaces with parents or siblings and just working in not an ideal environment where they maybe didn't have a dedicated desk or place to work. The last theme here under academic grace was patience. And these comments were those that pertain to just overall patience with the students, their struggles with the online environment and technical difficulties. So here's a comment from a student, please be patient. It is significantly harder to teach and learn online. 
The second most prevalent overarching theme theme from the student results was this idea or comments regarding the class or lecture format. Um, from this overarching theme, there were several sub themes that emerged um, with the most prevalent being uh, comments regarding the synchronous class style an asynchronous class style and live lecture capture. The first of these themes, synchronous class style refers to faculty using um, software such as Zoom uh, to basically uh, have class online at the normal time that students would generally have if we were in a face-to-face -face situation. 28 students responded positively to liking the synchronous style class with one student writing, if you want kids to attend or watch the lectures, making them live on Zoom is far more effective than just posting videos. The posted videos get skipped over real quick. Now, in contrast to majority of students liking the synchronous class style, we also had some students who preferred the asynchronous style um, where students are provided with pre-recorded video or lecture prep materials, which they can watch at their own pace and on their own time. Um, one student wrote HuskyCast, which is our kind of our general software that Michigan Tech uses uh, or that faculty at Michigan Tech use to upload and make videos available to students, allows students to complete work on their own time, whereas Zoom can be complicated for students, especially in different time zones. Um, this comment really looks at, uh, in an online environment, we have to consider students who have those special circumstances and we have to be flexible with them, um, especially in the time of COVID. You know, they might not be able to attend class at the same time. Um, they may not have a great internet connection. Um, they're just not in their ideal learning environment. So providing students with an asynchronous uh, lecture style can help with that. Building on that, students also made comments regarding live lecture capture, which is not the pre-recorded lectures that we would see in an asynchronous style course. Um, rather, it's capturing those live lectures um, in the synchronous style, um, and making those recordings available to students. Um, again, with one student writing, be flexible with attendance for lecture and make them available outside of class, which relates to, again, being flexible with students, especially in the time of COVID. Um, it is important to note that we do have two remaining codes here. We have, um, again, a synchronous and an asynchronous code, but instead of um, positive remarks regarding those course styles, their negative remarks, um, which again, I think are already reflected in the comments made by students. So another overarching theme that we found within our responses from students were the use of resources. So these included um, the themes of just general other resources. And what we mean by that is um, materials other than class resources. Um, some things about Canvas and then internet connection. So with regard to other resources, uh, students often referred to like extra videos, supplemental instruction like notes or uh, extra assignments, but things beyond what you would normally prevent pre or present in your course materials. So here we have a quote from a student, offer extra resources to your students such as supplemental notes to assist with any gaps in the online learning. We also had comments about Canvas and Canvas is our specific learning management system. Other students, other classes, um, other universities use different systems like Web Tyco or Blackboard or something else. But so you can think of these really as about your learning management system. So here in terms of preparedness category, these comments were about having materials available on our learning management system and releasing the materials at the correct time. So you can see we have a quote here from a student, post the materials for the day at the beginning of, of the day or before the day they are meant to be gotten over. So what they really wanted was to know that these materials were available to them in advance or on time um, for when they were going to use them. And then we have another category for organization of our learning management system, which is really about being able to find items in the course and having consistency in the location and organization. And we have a quote here from a student, keep Canvas and other class resources organized and easy to navigate and access. Finally, we have comments on internet connection um, and also connecting to Zoom. And you can see here, we have a quote on 
good internet is very appreciated during Zoom calls. We had um, both on the faculty side and on the student side, Zoom, Zoom connection issues, which really were related to internet connection issues. Uh, we live in a rural area, so many of our students and faculty are in areas with uh, kind of spotty internet connection. Another theme that emerged from the student results was the idea of maintaining communication with students. So having faculty members communicate adequately with students in the online environment. And within this theme, there were several uh, sub codes or sub themes that students highlighted um, with the first one or the most prevalent being general communication. And this just refers to communication between faculty and students. It's not necessarily based upon the type of communication or the method with which they communicate, just um, focuses mainly on the communication between the faculty and the students. Um, one student writes, communicate as much as possible via websites, email, et cetera, to ensure students have what they need to succeed. Uh, following this, students also made comments in terms of communicating due dates, um, which focuses on you know, giving the students information regarding the deadlines, any reminders, and weekly updates they might need. Um, one student writes, make sure due dates are clear. You miss out on those small reminders in class when it's online. Finally, um, students also had some ideas and comments regarding the use of email on the faculty's end. And this really focused on students wanting faculty members to check their email regularly and respond to it regularly as well. And this last quote we have here says, check your email regularly or have another form of communication open for the students to connect with you. And all these, communi all these comments regarding communication really highlights the fact that students just want the faculty members to communicate with them in a multitude of ways and as much as they can. Um, and it also highlights the fact that in an online environment, um, it's best to over communicate to the students um, because it's very easy to miss an email or miss an announcement on the learning management system. We have the theme here of faculty interactions, which we originally had under resources category, but we pulled out because it was such a large, um, they had such a large number of responses. Um, in, in this category. So faculty interactions, we're talking really about feedback with students, interacting with students, and although faculty can be considered a learning resource, their interactions really are a unique thing in the online environment. And much of the literature about online learning has to do with how we maintain interactions in online classrooms. So we have quotes here from students, have a general board where students can anonymously submit questions and the whole class can see the response give students opportunities to ask questions or get help in smaller, more efficient settings, rather than within the entire class, coming into breakout rooms, staying after class, try to engage with students more than normal, make students engage during class, even just encouraging students to turn webcams on, make students more accountable. And so what students really were desiring here was a richer um, interaction with online faculty. The student workload category included several underlying themes, um, including group work comments, uh, ideas about exams and advice with facilitating exams, and then generally, generally about the student workload. So having too much work or too little work in the online environment. Uh, students, students advise faculty members um, to keep the group work as it facilitates learning within the online environment. Um, and really majority of their comments were based on how that group work interaction um, worked within the online course. Um, one student writes, if classes continue to be online, try to put students in teams where they might know some of the students from before or from this class. Um, additionally, students had some advice for faculty in terms of facilitating exams. Um, and based on the definition we have here, there's kind of a wide variety of advice from students um, with them focusing on the fact that uh, the students want faculty to, regardless of what style of exam you decide to give, to maintain the format throughout the course. Um, some students recognize that it is easier to cheat in an online environment and want faculty to be aware of that and to somehow um, manage that so that students who are putting in the work aren't 
you know, getting cheated out of um, students who are just looking up the answers online. And then finally, there were also some comments about not giving exams entirely. Uh, one student writes, if you decide to have an online final, just make it open book, open note, because most people will use their notes regardless. Again, um, referring back to the how easy it is to cheat in an online environment. Finally, students, student comments focused in on the workload for the students and making the faculty aware of whether they were having, you know, they were giving too much work or too little work in the online environment. Um, with one student writing, online classes does not mean more classes and more work outside of class. Having more work than, having more work than if we're a normal class does not help anyone. So our last, or not, this is not quite our last one, but one of our last ones is office hours. Office hours were really comments here about using online office hours, having them, um, maintaining them so that you're available for students. So you can see our quotes here, please try to have some sort of online office hours, even if it's by appointment only, but having a talk face-to-face -face can clear up issues better than email. Another student says, Offering virtual office hours gives students a chance to clear up confusion they may have over a material or expectations. And finally, one student says, find an online alternative to office hours where students can still use you as a resource. The theme of grading also came up amongst the student responses um, with just two subcodes, uh, one being general grading comments and then another being about the timeliness of grading. So for the general grading comments, students had advice such as have grades available at all times on the learning management system, as well as grade leniently, but fairly. And then focusing in on the timeliness of grading, students suggested timely grading of assignments is always important and helps a lot with online instruction. So we know what we can do better on. So the major theme within uh, these student quotes is that students want their grades available to them so that they can kind of see where they're going wrong and they can work to uh, better their grades. With the category of routine, comments here had to do with keeping a regular schedule, doing the work when you would normally attend a class. And so just in general, making sure that um, things stick to the same schedule they would have in our normal face-to-face -face times. So you can see we have a quote from a student here, make virtual classes their normal times so students can have a schedule. We have another quote, keep a regular schedule. And our final quote, have some sort of routine with assignments if assignments are inconsistent and can be easy to miss an email. So in conclusion, overall, what we're seeing here is that students are requesting academic grace, which is what we define as that combination of flexibility, understanding, and patience. They're recommending that we have a live class, but record it so that those who can't make it can go back and look at it and refer to our lectures after the fact that we organize our LMSs in an easy to follow manner, and we offer additional learning resources besides what we would normal have in, normally have in a face-to-face -face class. Students recommend that we communicate everything over and over in multiple formats, including deadlines, that we maintain our interactions with our students just um, in the online environment, just as we would in face-to-face, -face. that we be conscious of their workload, but make sure to keep the group work because they like to interact with each other and they learn well that way. That we design open notes exams because the students seem to be using them anyway. And that we maintain online office hours because they want that chance to come and ask us questions and that our grading be fast and flexible. So we wanna remind you that we're going to go into these breakout rooms. We have them organized around academic grace instructor presence and supporting online students. And there will be someone ready to moderate and take notes in each of those rooms. Um, so if you can go ahead and you can hover over your name in the participants list, if you go to the participants list and open up, um, then you, I think there's a more or a three little dots, you can click on that. 
And then from there, you can rename yourself to the, to the name of the room you want to go to. So here you can see I put IP for instructor presence, my name, and then my pronouns. So while you do that, does anyone have any questions they want to ask? If you can't unmute yourself, you can go ahead and type them in chat. Okay, and if no one has any questions, then we'll go ahead and I'll open up the breakout rooms. And our plan is to have a little brainstorming session where we talk about um, which room, which um, strategies would help our students better kind of brainstorm different ideas around academic grace, instructor presence and supporting our students. And then someone will be there, there'll be note taking and we'll stay there until about quarter two and then maybe 10 to somewhere in there. And then I will close the breakout rooms and bring everyone back and we can have uh, probably quarter two. So that way we can have five minutes for each room to have a uh, report out to the whole group as to the discussion that went on in their room. So you'll get 15 minutes to talk as a group. And you should see invites for your groups coming if you change your name. If you go down to your breakout rooms tabs, you should have a little invite. And for those of you who haven't yet, you can go ahead and change your name. You can go to your participants list, or if you can see a picture of yourself, generally you can hover over your name on the picture of yourself. Usually there's three little dots or sometimes a more tab and you can select rename, rename yourself if you wanna to go to IP for instructor presence, AG for academic grace or SOS for supporting our online students. And those of you who are remaining, do you have a preference about which breakout room you go to or should I just select one for you? I'm, I'm actually driving, so I'm unable to look at my phone to get to a room. <laughs> Who's speaking? I'm on my way. Uh, this is Mindy. I'm on my way home from work. I've been working and trying to do this. It, is the there, timing has worked out well all day up until now. Is there a room that appeals to you? I wonder, I think I may, can do it with a phone in. Do you um, I'd say the instructor presence. Okay, I'll try sending you there. Let's see if it works. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, something just popped up. I accidentally cleared it though. I wonder if I can, I don't know if I can, I think I can move you and then move you again. There we go. Okay, and what about heart and class and towns? Do you have preferences about where you go? Oh, I see. Their instructor presence at for IP, academic grace, AG, and supporting online students, SOS. Probably um, for heart, SOS. For heart, SOS. All right, I'll send you there. Thank you. Yep. Class, do you have a preference? Class quant? Okay, if you don't have a presence, uh, preference, I will send you to Academic Grace because there are the fewest people there. So we'll send you over that way. So our breakout room should have ended and um, thank you all for your time and being willing to contribute to your group discussions. And now we're gonna have a little call out from our group, just our, our groups from each of our breakout rooms. And I think we'll start with Academic Grace. So does the recorder or someone, someone from the Academic Grace room wanna come and give us a report as to what happened in that room? Sure, so um, there were three of us. It was me and Amanda and uh, Rachel. 
And um, we just had a really good discussion about ways, you know, you know, first um, about the balancing act between, you know, extending grace, but also not being, you know, taken advantage of, right? Um, uh, and, you know, seem to have a consensus, I would say that, you know, rather err on the side of extending grace <laughs> when it's not warranted rather than, you know, not extending it when it, when it is, right? Um, but, but we talked, there were some really great suggestions about like um, maybe having students collaborate on, on setting policies or on, you know, setting expectations and like, you know, in, in what ways should grace be extended? How would that work? How would that balance work? Um, about policies and structures that um, we have in our courses or could in our courses put into place to build in um, grace and flexibility. Um, so like maybe some progressive grading systems, um, uh, this idea of slip days um, that, you know, you get a certain number of just automatic passes on due dates or daily assignments if you need them. Um, uh, uh, Rachel talked about, um, you know, a test, you know, an automatic test makeup policy that she has in her test, in her class, in her face-to-face -face class if students aren't prepared, but, you know, thinking about extending that to online formats. And then we wrapped up by talking about um, uh, Zoom cameras, um, you know, so this, you know, idea that, you know, students may not all, always be able to or be comfortable with turning on your camera. So, um, uh, you know, making it clear that that's our preference, but we're not going to mandate it. And Amanda had some good suggestions for other ways that she gauges reaction in class, you know, especially if students aren't able to have cameras on, like using the thumbs up, th thumbs down emoji or and entering a rating for the level of comprehension that they have on a topic and in, in, in chat. So she can kind of gauge where they're at. Um, anything I missed, Amanda and Rachel? I don't think so. It was a great discussion. Thank you so much for that. And Tom, do you want to report out on instructor presence? Sure. Okay. So uh, we got some notes here. And the question that we started out with is how might we maintain interactions with students and increase their sense of instructor presence? And we kind of had this discussion going simultaneously between a, a traditional fully asynchronous, fully online course and the, the current very widespread use of, of uh, live Zoom classes as well. So uh, it made for an interesting mix. And some of the things that were uh, brought up here is uh, uh, trying to encourage faculty to use voice and video in their fully online courses. Um, and also even using that video and audio when they're giving feedback on student work. Uh, that's of course gonna enhance instructor presence and, and make things uh, feel a little more personal. Uh, pulled in sync sessions into formerly fully online courses. So actually, encouraging fully online courses to uh, do that, you know, that synchronous Zoom stuff. Uh, In-class students with uh, hands-on labs once per week. Uh, encourage students in pre-recorded lectures. Oh, sorry, my access expired somehow. <laughs> uh, Here, let me, let me drop it again in chat. It's coming back. I just had to log in again, which was really <laughs> Annoying. Sorry, especially when it happened now. But uh, okay, encourage encourage questions on the Canvas LMS. Uh, can go to the class within their LMS and ask questions about assignments, errors, and quizzes, and everyone gets the message for for it using conversations, Canvas messaging. So uh, Mindy brought up the idea that she was using that uh, in Canvas. It's called Inbox or Communications. It's like sort of the uh, not really even internal, but uh, the the inside of Canvas email system which students can adjust to how they get according to their uh, preferences, their notification preferences. And, uh, and Michelle and I also noted that a lot of people at Tech do the same thing on what we call a general course Q&A discussion board. But uh, in, you know, either way, encouraging these students to ask those questions, especially if they're course related questions so everybody else in the course can see the question and the answer. Uh, running synchronous classes in Zoom, mixed results of student wanting synchronous and asynchronous. I don't know if you remember uh, when uh, Michelle was and Amber were reporting out on the uh, results that students were saying, they had, you know, they had almost, well, almost two thirds as many people saying they don't like the synchronous as the ones that said they did. And of course, these were first year students that they were surveying. It could have been the opposite if you were talking about non-traditional adult working professionals. Synchronous classes made almost a full work day on Zoom for students and the asynchronous gave more flexibility to work around schedules. 
uh, our first year students learning how to make keep schedules of their own. One faculty had feedback on too many synchronous classes for students, and they wanted the flexibility to learn things at their own pace, at their own time. So it's uh, something we've we've probably all come familiar with is that young students may have difficulty managing their time to have a bunch of of uh, online classes, but it's also very challenging to have a bunch of synchronous Zoom sessions at where you used to just go to class. Uh, and off. Use online office hours in certain virtual office hours. Have a calendar so students can make appointments. That's a great idea. You could do that in Canvas. You can do it on Google Calendar. Uh, be willing to meet with them at 7 p.m. or when that you know when they're actually available, as opposed to just doing something once a week at three. Uh, and she finds more traffic in office hours during the evening than she did during the day, and that she did during face to face. Uh, that's about as much time as I want to gobble up. I think uh, Michelle or anybody in that group want to add anything to what we talked about? No. All right. Then does supporting our students want to report out to us? Um, sure. I'll, I'll provide a quick summary. Um, there was some discussion around uh, several people offering zoom meetings at a variety of times to, you know, support students in asynchronous classes and not a lot of students taking advantage of that not not showing up so that may not be a good way of uh, reaching students. Um, uh, a really good tip on um, working directly with uh, book publishers, most of them will if you ask for it will allow a two week grace period for access di digital access, which allows students to kind of get situated and work out any issues they have with financial aid and stuff um, and have access to the book at the same time. Um, so they don't get behind um, personalized videos to um, like walk students through homework problems um, step by step. Um, and then some discussions around just being being flexible, um, flexible with deadlines, um, flexible with turning in late assignments and earning partial credit and things like that. So also a good discussion. Did I miss anything, group? Okay. I think you covered it. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank you all so much um, for participating in our workshop today. I think we got some really cool ideas of ways that we can support our students, have increased presence, and um, also have bring academic grace to the classroom. Um, as you know, I mentioned that Amanda and I are working on a paper for this. The Journal of Engineering Education had a call for papers about response to COVID. So um, if you keep an eye out for that, you might be able to see some more um, results we're pairing that with some quantitative data from the um, university as well as um, we workshop this at the university as well. And so we might include some of that faculty advice in, in there as well. So we're gonna keep this document up as a living document. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it so that um, it's at the end of this workshop, I'll switch it so that it's read only. But if you want to, if anyone's interested in sharing um, contact information with anyone they've met in the group, you can either drop it in chat now, you can drop it in the document if you want. Um, if you're not comfortable with it on the document, I suggest you use chat, but that's a great way to just be able to get in touch with each other afterwards. But feel free to use this as a resource. And then the handout that we gave you as well, um, that really summarizes the results that the students had for online students learning. And although that might not be as useful for you in planning your classes and how you organize your classes, it could be really beneficial for your students, especially if you have um, any first year students or first time online students coming on, which um, it may be hard to believe right in this world <laughs> that we have first time online students because even our high school students, many of them are learning online, but every fall we'll have first year college students and online college is very different than online high school. Um, so I think it's, it's good to offer that advice from the past online learners to our students. All right, so thank you very much for attending and it looks like we're done with enough time for us to actually go and get a bathroom break in before our next session. <laughs>